So now, everybody, I have with me a guest today on the Hard Rock Heavy Metal Zone calling in iconic drummer from Death Metal Van Nocturnus. Also, before he played in a band called Morbid Angel. In, in my opinion, one of the reasons why we have such a great Death Metal album, The Key. Here he is, Mike Browning. Mike, how you doing? How you doing, Robert, man? I'm doing great, and I have to say it's great to have you calling in. And I was talking about The Key today, and... To me, that's just such a great example of experimentation, progressive music. And when you came up with that album, what were you trying to do? Because I know a lot of the bands at that time, I felt there was a lot of what you would call copycats with death metal. In the key, it just stood out. Was that kind of your intention when making that album to really get Nocturnus to separate from the usual crowd? Well, I mean, I've always been kind of into my own thing and... and, and having some different people in the band uh you had two different types of guitar players that you know like one guy was more the old style stuff and one guy was more technical and and then you know uh, we had a keyboard player at the time you know by then and and it was just i think it was just really that we had a mixture of like so many different people in the band you know and and uh, you know that i sang and played drums at the same time which you don't have too too often either yeah that's very so, true uh, I, I think we just had a lot of weird different things going on all at the same time and they all kind of came together yeah. and you know it, it kind of came out in the key <laughs> exactly and also to bring up about that and i also want to touch upon this the death metal it's unbelievable how it's grown and i'm sure for you because the tampa scene is very important in the history of the music Nowadays, again, because of the internet, and I always say this, if a lot of bands back in the day, if they had the internet, just think of you know the exposure and reach. And are you surprised where Death Metal has grown today? Because again, when you were first starting, I'm sure, again, you didn't have no idea about the internet and what it would do later on in you know, the future. But it's interesting, did you think, you know, this is underground music. No one, you know, later on is really going to know about this. This is just a small knit community. Yeah, exactly. I think I think you definitely hit that on the head. Exactly right because you know back then what our, our range of audience was just um, pretty much writing people, handwriting you know notes to people and, and mailing out you know like cassette tapes, uh, like people kind of do today of mixtapes you know of CDs and stuff. But you know it's like you put like a song or two from all these bands that you just discovered on the tape and send to your to your friend and they would do the same thing. And if you liked you know, one or two of the songs that were on there from any certain band, and you would, like, go kind of hunt that down. And, you know, uh, the only thing you really had to spread it around were your friends that you wrote to and fanzines. You know, and fanzines were really what what kept the whole thing going, you know, until it actually, the Internet actually hit and kind of was a different way to spread things around. Exactly, because now you have, which I do is blog writing, you know, album reviews via online, so that's definitely keeping the music going. And interesting, all I want to bring up too is in the grindcore documentary for Eric. I don't know if you remember that you were the keyboard oh, yeah. player. Yeah, that that's actually how I found out about you guys when I was in high school. I was checking that out, and that's my introduction to Nocturnus. And you brought up something really interesting. Was back in the time you said America? It took a little while for the American death metal scene to pick up. Surprisingly, where in Europe, your grindcore fans and your death metal fans they're going crazy for this stuff, right? Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, it's still kind of that way in a way. I mean, and w- when we go to Europe, we have really big crowds and everything, and when we play, you know, local shows and things like that, they're not, they're not you know, I guess, I mean, it's it's one thing of, you know, even Obituary just played last Saturday, and, you know, they had a great crowd, which was like maybe, two, you know, 300 people. So, I mean, that's, and then, but they go to Europe and they pull 3,000 people. So, yeah. you know, you can pretty much almost add a zero, <laughs> To whatever crowd you have here in the states, to over there, and that you know? also adds and, yeah the money. Yeah, and and you know people they they just look at music differently in Europe. I think um, the people over there they 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 love the music. They they and and it's that way with like all of South America as well. They're totally into the music. Where it's always seemed like in the United States that everything is run on the media and the fads of what what's uh, this is a fad right now this is a you know this is what's popular right now you know and and kids they'll listen to one band this week and then they won't even remember who they were the next week because they're listening to this other band you know they have a different favorite band like some of my favorite bands have are still from that time you know and you know i, I just can't i haven't seen stuff that's really taken me away from saying 
these are still some of my favorite bands from the 80s and, and early 90s, you know? Yeah. And I've always said with death metal, and I don't know if I, earlier in the show, if you've been listening, I was playing some Rush and I kept saying, because Rush is a band that I've ever since a young age have always been attached to. And I always felt that they had that mentality was they didn't really succumb to too many fads. They stayed in a sense true to their form. And I, I guess I'll ask you, were you influenced by Neil Peart as a drummer? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, I remember being in high school and, you know, just getting my, you know, like my still having my first car. So I'm here I am like 17 years old, you know, working at a burger restaurant in Tampa and, you know, I'm listening to Tom Sawyer going, "What is this? This is unbelievable," you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, and, I... <laughs> and and they were around long before that, of course, but you know, when that song basically kind of came out, I think it had to have been what like 1980, you know. Yeah. And 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 it's like you know seventy nine eighty when some of that stuff came out and but rush you know I mean they never really cared about radio playing I mean you take an album like twenty one twelve or something and you know you have songs on there that are nine and ten minutes long you know and, and you know it wasn't really till around the Tom Sawyer era that did they think about writing a song that could be played on the radio you know it's, they just didn't care. Exactly. You know, they did. They did what they wanted to do, and and I've always thought Rush was just an amazing band, you know. And, and today, of course, you know, it's still the same. They're they're uh, and you know, and when you think about it, they're one of the only bands too, you know, that has survived. And, and they're just a three piece, you know. Just what they create as three people has just been amazing, and you know, they really do it live as well. You know, it's like, uh, you know, even back in the days when you didn't have bands playing to millions of backing tracks and things like that. You know, they were up there as three musicians with no backing tracks, just creating some awesome music. Yeah. And again, speaking of awesome music, I got to keep talking about the key. And also, again, following the key, you had thresholds. And with that album, I felt you guys definitely went in a more technical style. Also, you departed from singing on that album. That's where you just focused on drumming. So how is that where you just focused on your, you know, instrumental craft instead of singing, too? Well, there was a lot of things going on at that time and and on the key everything was going really well we did better than we expected you know and and you know eric wasn't sure you know what they had with us because it was so different and then you know they were like well you know the demo did pretty good the last you know the science of horror demo that we did and you know so they were hoping that it would do well you know and then you know got a little crazier on the key everything and you know faster and a little more technical and you know then we had more of a you know, as we were writing the songs, we ended up with more of a concept on the second side of the album. You know, with like the last four songs, ended up kind of fitting all together to make a little story. And um, I was hoping to kind of continue that on the second record, you know. And and um, what happened was, you know, we did a, a couple tours, and a lot of people were saying, well, you know, this band's cool, but the guitar players don't move around a lot, and the drummer is singing, and he's behind this huge drum set and we can't see him, you know, so live, uh, the, the only problem with Nocturnus and, you know, Nocturnus AD is that it does suffer a little bit live because I'm behind the drums singing, yeah. you know, and, and, but, you know, I don't think that's such a bad thing. I mean, it's just not what people are used to is what is more than anything. But what happened was the record label started saying, well, you know, it's time for you guys to do your second record. And they were like saying, you should, you know, like stop. They actually told me that I should stop playing drums and just sing on the, on the second record and have a drummer. No, you're not. Like get out from behind the that. drum set. And I didn't really want to do that. And they said, well, here's the thing. You know, on your second record, you're going to get, if you want, you know, if you don't do one or the other, if you don't get a front man, then you're not going to have as good of a budget as you had on the first record. And we're not going to even do a video for you. And at that time, having a video was a very, very important thing to have, you know, at that time, just even a one-song video. So, you know, the rest of the band, you know, I've always tried to do things kind of in a democratic way with the band, and everybody, like, I didn't want to really change anything. I said, so what, you know, if, if we, we'll get this stuff eventually. Let's just stick to what we do, you know? And everybody else was like, no, no, you know, let's get rid of the occult image and let's let's get a singer, you know, a front man, and, you know, then we'll have a video, we'll have a bigger budget, and, you know, the record label will be behind us with the record. And I was just like, I don't think this is the right thing to do, but, you know, I was, it was like four against one, you know? Yeah, that's And tough. I was like, well, okay, you know, let's, let's see what happens. And, you know, when I 
actually quit singing, uh, also what happened was that everybody else in the band, you know, started writing lyrics as well. So you had a lot of different ideas coming in on thresholds. You know, every song is completely different on thresholds as far as lyrics. None of them fit together, and none of them fit with the first album. Yeah. And that's not what I wanted, you know, when I when I created the band. And what else was going on was the fact that the keyboard player and, and one of the other guitar play, one of the guitar players, Sean and Lou, they went and trademarked the name Nocturnus in 1992. Mm. You know, and and I didn't know that, you know, that it had happened. You know, I never trademarked the name because we had got signed to Earache, and I was like, well, nobody's going to steal the band name. You can go go into any record store and buy our album, you know? Yeah. So, you know, I, I didn't think that anybody in my own band would go behind my back and steal the name from me. Everybody knew that I came up with the name, that I started the band, and, you know, and and, and everybody that was on the key. Yeah. Um, none of them, none of those people were on the first demo. That's insane. Well, I got to bring this up is, so how are you able now to continue with this Nocturnus AD? Because I know you're calling it after death for a while, but now when you guys were built on Maryland Death Fest, and this is how I kind of found out about what you've been doing recently, how are you able to still do that? Has there been any problems with that, calling yourself Nocturnus AD? Well, I mean, I, I, I was, I've been wanting to you know, call the band Nocturnus anyway, but you know, because of the fact that it was trademarked by Lou in 1992, and, and and the thing was, you know, I started the band in 1987, you know. So I had the name for several years, even before any of those guys that are on the key were in the band, you know, at least yeah. a couple of years. You're the and, Yeah, and, and, you know, so I never figured that would happen, you know. And when it did happen, I was like, you know, I was kind of fed up with everything. I didn't like the direction that Thresholds went in as much. I mean, I, I didn't hate the album by any means, but it really wasn't what I had wanted to do. And, you know, I wanted to continue the story from the key on the second album. I wanted to continue some of the other songs that, that weren't part of the story, like, you know, stuff like Lake of Fire, Standing in Blood. You know, I wanted to kind of continue that a little bit, you know, on the lyrics, build on that, Neolithic. You know, some of the songs I wanted to build on those on the second album and continue all of them, like little stories. Kind of like how King Diamond does. That's very you know? creative. I, I mean, I would have loved to heard that. I mean, that's to me what a person would enjoy is you doing something like that, stepping outside the box, where a lot of bands, again, it's just come up with songs that really, like you said, King Diamond, it's a concept, it's a story. You know, yeah. It continues. Well, the, I didn't want to get trapped either, though, in doing like the whole album as a concept. You know, that's, that is hard to do. And, and that's then, true. You know, you don't want to keep the story going for the whole album on every album in the same story. I mean, it, you know, I'm not saying it couldn't work, but it, you, you need some diversity on your album, actually, you know. Yeah. But that was the whole point, you know, and then, and like, so since I couldn't use the name, I kind of, you know, I was watching, like, a lot of bands lately have just been adding, like, you had Ghost. Ghost is huge right now. That's true. And there was another okay. Ghost. So what did they do? They added BC to it. Ghost BC. Now they can do whatever they want, and they are super popular. They're opening for Iron Maiden, you know, and, and things like that, you know. So it 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 when that happened to them, and they were like, "We're Ghost," and then and then another band's like, "No, we are Ghost. We were Ghost before you were." So they just were like, "Okay, we'll just add the BC to it, and now we're okay." And it worked for them. Exactly. So when I saw that happen, and, and you know, and Tuned has in Tuned AD now as well. I actually you know, I reviewed I'm, that album, so yeah. But I mean, I, I actually added the AD to Nocturnus before I heard that Entomb did. It, it happened pretty close to the same time, I think. But you know, I had already mm. thought about doing Nocturnus AD anyway. Yeah. And I've been doing After Death for a while, and 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 the funny thing is, I still have After Death, and it's the same band members actually, but. What you know? What I wanted to do with with, and I, I didn't do this with After Death, and I kept things different on purpose, you know, because I didn't want to say this was Nocturnus, the new Nocturnus, you know. Yes, it was, that's very true. After Death was never meant to be the new Nocturnus. It was, it was just the new band that I had, and I love having keyboards in the band, so it, it did. It was a little bit like it, but not exactly, you know. And but then you know when I said, well, let's do Nocturnus AD. You know, because we can do that, and we can get away with that without having any legal problems. You know, then, then, you know, then I figured, well, now I can do what I wanted to do before, and and actually continue the story from the key. 
Yeah, that's see, that's always the great. Part. Yeah, that's always the great part because see, a lot of these bands, hair metal bands, are the biggest offenders of this. Where there'll be two versions of the band, so you'll have one LA Guns and then another LA Guns. And let's be honest, the world only needs really one LA Guns, and we still we don't really need one LA Guns. So <laughs> that kind of tells you a lot of bands when they do do that name split. Sometimes they try to fight over it. it it's very chaotic. So I really like what you did with the AD. I think it's really yeah. good. I mean, like I said, I would like to just call it Nocturnus, but there would be problems. And, and, you know, even though the trademark did run out, what I've been told by a couple of entertainment lawyers is that, you know, all those guys have to do is say no, and, you know, they have to agree on it since they did own the original trademark, and I don't, you know, that if I wanted to use Nocturnus again, that they would have to agree to it, and, you know, and there'd have to be, you know, like agreements and this and that, and if it came down to... You know, like, oh, if we ever got really popular and started actually making money in metal, which doesn't happen that often, but if it, if it <laughs> did, a, yeah. you know, I mean, you know, all these people would be coming out of the woodwork going, oh, you know, with their hand out, of course. Yes. You know, and so I kind of wanted to make sure that I did something that I could do legally and separate myself from it, but still be connected to it. Yeah, exactly. Now, let's talk quickly about what you have coming forward in the future with Nocturna City. So you told me you have a festival. I announced that. It's in Berlin. It's, what is this, NVW Fest, or NWN Fest. Right, the Nuclear War Now. Um, that's a, that's a, a label. As a lot of people know, Nuclear War Now is a pretty popular label that does, like, really, really great releases on vinyl okay. and, and stuff like that. And they focus on a lot of older stuff, too, and, and doing really good justice to it and releasing it on vinyl. So they came to me and asked me about the two Nocturnus demos. And, um, you know, I was like, that'd be awesome, you know, because it has never been released on vinyl. It's been released on CD, but never on vinyl. And they said, well, you know, I have tons of pictures and stuff like that and, you know, things. And, you know, so we decided, okay, we'll do this on vinyl and, um, you know, and, and release it. And they were like, well, we do a festival, too, every other year in Berlin, and, you know, we if we do this, then, you know, we'd like you guys to play the festival as well. <laughs> and we're like, of course, you know, that'd be no problem. So, you know, that that's kind of how the Nuclear War Now Fest came about for us to do. I mean, we did some other fests, like you said, the Maryland Death Fest, and um, we, we did Hellfest in France back in June, and Dokum, um in, in Holland or the Netherlands in June as well. Yeah. So we've been doing some fests. It seems like I, and it was only actually last October uh, that I I decided to go with the Nocturnus AD. Hmm. So it's only been a year, and and um, we've done so many festivals already. You know, like quite a few festivals, and and it just wasn't. I mean, it it it, it hit kind of fast when <laughs> as soon as I announced, like, okay, I'm going to do Nocturnus AD. It's like, but it's just like it opened a portal, and all these things just started happening. You know, yeah. so. It, it was really a, kind of a lucky thing to happen, and it just, um, you know, people love the name, and, and I just figured since I really did come up with the name, and I started the band by myself with just a bass player, you know, Richard Bateman, um, you know, we who was on the first demo, it was just him and I right in the beginning, you know, and then we got, actually, Vincent Crowley was the first guitar player in Nocturnus, not, not, not Gino or Mike Davis, hmm. and um, so it was just a three-piece you know, for a little while, just guitar, bass, and drums, and we had a few songs, and uh, Vince had a couple songs, and, and we, we all kind of got together and, you know, had about, we had a bunch of songs just as a three-piece, you know, and then we had a Gino right before we did the first demo, and and, um, and then Vince just kind of got fed up with Florida in general, and, you know, and, well, what happened was, first, Richard uh, Bateman, the bass player, he was asked by uh, Nasty Savage, to join their band and so he you know Nocturnus was just a little local band at that time you know we didn't even have a demo out and here's this really big band that's touring you know Europe and all this stuff and oh you know their bass player put his hand through a window and uh and and like severed several nerves in his hand and couldn't play anymore wow. and they needed a bass player like right away and Richard was just you know like one of the better bass players in Tampa and he still is of course but you know, so they kind of said, you know, hey, do you want to fill in and, and, you know, and do this tour and stuff? So he kind of quit Nocturnus to do Nasty Savage. 
And then, you know, at the time, Vince was kind of, like, not liking Florida too much, and he just decided to leave as well. So that just left me and Gino. And um, Gino had a cousin named Mike Davis, and he's like, oh, I got a cousin that plays guitar. We could get him, you know. And, and then, you know, Mike had a, you know, a bass player, and, uh, you know, a lot of these people went to school together. I didn't know him personally, but, you know, Gino and Davis knew each other, and then Davis knew Mike Estes, who's our bass player. I mean, Jeff Estes, um, our bass player. And then, you know, like, they all knew Lou, played keyboards, so we got him in the band as well, you know. And mm-hmm. that's how it kind of grew into what, it, what the key was. Wow. And I will tell everybody again, the key is a great album. And if you have not checked it out, do so. And it sounds like you're very busy this coming, you know, month with the uh, festival. Also, it sounds like the future, you're you're energized. You're hitting the ground running, right? Sounds nocturnal. Yeah. ADs going forward. Uh, any yeah, plan? we haven't really stopped. I mean, you know, like I said, we, we you know, we took the first couple months, we, we kind of like organized some things and we played a show with Obituary in January. And then, you know, we, we did a, you know, like, um, then we did the Maryland Death Fest and we did, you know, like, uh, then we did, you know, went to Europe and did those shows. And then, you know, we came back and, and we have this show coming up now. Um, you know, so it's been kind of, yeah, we've been staying pretty busy. Yep. And, and, and right now we're actually, um, working on, you know, what, what we're going to do in, in Europe for 2015 as well. Um, we're going to use the same promoter that, that, took us last year so we're just trying to figure out you know what's best for us because you know all of us have jobs and you know i have a daughter and stuff like that so obviously i'm not 20 years old anymore and i I just can't go off and tour for you know three or four or five months out of the year you know and and you know most of the people in the band are are kind of in the same situation so it's it's like you know what we we're really pretty lucky to be able to do what we're doing you know like this and just go do three two or three shows or maybe even just one festival or something you know a festival and a couple shows and then come right back because literally it's funny like you know i'll be working my job like on wednesday and then i'll take thursday and friday off and and you know i'll I'll fly to europe play a show friday and saturday and then like fly back on sunday and then i'm back to work monday (laughs) yeah that's insane (laughs) man (laughs) it's kind of a weird situation to do that kind of stuff you know to play in front of like thousands of people on on saturday and then be back you know you you know doing your regular job on monday you know it's just like wow this is kind of strange but you know it it really works for us so you know as long as i can do it you know i'm going to keep doing it and you know now we're starting to work on new material and we've got our first new song already written and uh not the lyrics yet but i already know you know what i'm going to do um, I have several ideas for, for the lyrics for songs already. I have several titles. Um, you know, I already know that the, that we're going to use either three or four of the songs to continue with the story from the key. And then, you know, like I said, we'll probably continue with a couple other songs, like I might do a, a prequel or a sequel to Neolithic, you know, um, like that. And, you know, something along the lines like uh, Lake of Fire and Standing in Blood kind of fit together as a song as well you know, as, as like a little two, two, two song story. So I might kind of continue with that, you know, and, uh, you know, so I've I've got tons of ideas, uh, for at least for the ideas, for the, uh, words, for the songs and the titles and things like that. And, you know, we're starting to work on the music now. So it's, um, it's starting to come together pretty well. Oh man! Again, if you're a Nocturnus fan, do not be complaining about this band not doing anything. Nocturnus AD, a lot coming the way. It sounds really awesome. I cannot wait for some of this stuff. The new music. You know, I'm be playing Neolithic actually, the first song of the new block. So uh, again, Mike, thank Hi. you for calling in. Also, was it you have a Facebook page that's Nocturnus AD, right? Right. We have that one. We have an After Death one, and I have just my regular Mike Browning page as well. And then we have a website too. Um, at, it's um i had it for after death but now we've uh we have a friend of ours um that, that that's helping us with the website and and we kind of um split the website to where you it's both bands have the same website you can go to one or the other and see all the stuff there it's just after death 666.com so um you know everything works together pretty well yeah, it's, it sounds like it so again Thank you for calling in. This has been a great conversation. A lot has been learned. And I really hope the fans out there listening, uh, they uh, are getting excited for the new stuff to come. 
Yeah, I hope so too. And you know, I, I think people will like it. It's it's uh, we're trying to keep it really close to along the lines of of what what we were doing. You know, or, or what I should say, what I was doing. You know, with with the guys that were on the key and. And, you know, so we're trying to kind of recapture that. And I think, you know, when we do play right now, everybody's been telling us that, you know, it sounds really just like the original band did. So, you know, we try to really push ourselves to, you know, get everything exactly the way it was back then. And then, you know, once we're real comfortable with all that and can play through like the key, you know, straight through the whole album is what we usually do live. We just start from the first song and play the whole thing straight through. And, you know, now that we're pretty good at doing that, you know, we have the, the style down, you know, and we're starting to work on new songs that work with that. Okay, that again, that's just stuff I cannot wait to hear. And, I, again, I wish you the best of luck. Nocturnus AD, everybody, check them out if you haven't. Mike, thanks for calling in today at the Hard Rock and Heavy Metal Zone. Yeah, thanks a lot, Robert. And uh, just want to say thanks for, for having me on. And uh, I hope uh, everybody checks it out. And and uh, we'll see you either in Europe or, or somewhere around the United States, hopefully next year. Yep. Okay. Take it easy. All right, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks.